Good evening and welcome to the Nevis Newscast for today, Tuesday, May 5th, 2015. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. The Medical University of the Americas, MUA, and the Nevis Island Administration, NIA, today announced its 2015 scholarships. Fiducia Library has the details in this report. Registration for the 2015 MUA NIA scholarships opened today, Tuesday, May 5th. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Nicole slack Liebert, outlined the priority areas for the scholarships. Here we are once again this year in 2015-2016 announcing the MUA NIA application call. And this application call will begin on the 5th of May and conclude on June 19th. And the priority areas targeted for this scholarship are in needs with the national priorities and for this year we have quite a few priority areas and these scholarships um, are un for undergraduate studies and there will be two scholarships awarded and the priority areas include nutrition, physical therapy, English, mathematics for example and there's a host of others which will be available when applicants receive the full call documents. The MUA and the NIA have been offering two academic scholarships for several years as part of the condition of the establishment of the Medical University of the Americas. Leibert also outlined the eligibility requirements. Some of the eligibility requirements for the students, they must be 18 years of age, must be a citizen of St. Kitts and Nevis, and must possess at least five CXC CSEC passes, including English, Mathematics, and One Science. They must be active in community service, and I say must. And so any applications we receive, there must be an accompanying letter from an organization stating your active involvement. Persons already attending university, unfortunately, cannot be considered for the scholarship. So, for example, if you're in a community college and would wish to transfer to a four-year institution, that is something that will not be considered for the scholarship. Or if you're already in a four-year institution and want to continue your studies, this scholarship will not meet. You will not be a candidate for the scholarship. According to Liebert, an essay outlining the reasons each applicant should be afforded the scholarship is mandatory along with an acceptance letter from the University of Choice, a letter of recommendation, and a completed application form. At the end of each semester, scholarships holders are required to submit their grades and a grade point average of 3.0 must be attained in order for the continuation of scholarship funds. The maximum value of the scholarship is $22,500 US per annum. Interested persons should visit the Health Promotion Unit on Jew Street, call 469-5521 extension 2022 or visit the Facebook page www.facebook.com slash the health promotion unit. The deadline for submission of required documents is June 19th, 2015. I'm Fredicia Library reporting for the Nevis Newscast. Thanks, Fredicia. Is volunteerism a thing of the past? That will be the topic for discussion on this evening's edition of Vaughn Radio's Let's Talk program at 8 p.m. Director of the Department of Community Development, Janet Nisbet Maloney, and four other panelists will be the program's guests. Is volunteerism a thing of the past? You know, these days we, we have some challenges in person wanting to volunteer give a little of the time or even to even if it's not even just to attend a meeting sometime um we prefer to be indoors behind our television or radio so we it's an interesting topic and they will be looking at it from a youth perspective also we are going to be looking at the the money culture that um has developed over the years as opposed to volunteerism we are also going to be looking at the, the nature of it as it exists now on the island and also the importance of volunteerism and its impact that it can the impact that it can have on the Nivijan community. Mm -hmm. The panelists for now we're gonna be looking at uh, Mr. Linnell Nolan who would have been engaged in a lot of community activities, Miss Sandra Fleming who is a pastor 
and Mr. Malcolm Ramsey and also Miss Vincia Herbert who is Hope representative and myself who will be representing the department. The discussion is one of several activities which has been held in a celebration of Community Development Month. Meantime, the department is also hosting a series of community center open days to give persons an opportunity to learn more about the activities that are offered by the centers in their communities and to make suggestions for additional activities. The Alberta Payne Community Center in Bath Village will host its open day from 10 a.m. tomorrow, Wednesday. May 6th. Bath Village has been, has been known as a fishing, fishing area and um, what we intend to do actually is to bring some of the fishermen here into the center as a sort of display. The, 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 um, the fish pot, the, 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 the sticks that you use to make the fish pot, the nets and whatever other um, fishing equipment um, they use from time to time. Those will be on, on, on display. The folks of Bath, Bath Village I want to say to you that you must be at the community center on, on the 6th of May because something new is going to happen at Bath Community Center. Something that has never happened before in Bath Village, where we're going to have on display um, fishing um, equipment, um, fish lines, I mean, fishing lines, fish pots, um, fish pot sticks, seine, and, and a, a few other um, uh, fishing equipment will be, on, will be on display for you to see. And there will also be a demonstration of how to go about uh, making the fish pot. Meanwhile, on Thursday, May 7th, the Charles Walters Community Center of Handerswood will host its open day. Elmida Brooks is the center manager. We start like 10 o'clock in the morning and we'll have the seniors group. Hopefully we'll have the seniors group who normally meet there. They will come in and they'll make their input into the program. We have set up a library. There are lots of books at the library. And uh, hopefully we'll be launching the op that is, we'll be opening the library officially on that day, um, Thursday, 7th of May. The Charles Walters Community Center is also making plans to put on a demonstration and a concert. What I'm looking at is the, um, the idea of pot making, fish pot making, or the fish fish traps. Uh, we know that in our area there are quite a few guys who do the, who make the pots. They use the appropriate wire and they also what you call brace the pot. So I'm hoping to get one or two of the guys from the area to come on site and demonstrate their skill to the public. I have um, confirmed with Alistair, Alistair Doerr, that he wants to put on a program featuring his group, that's Alistair, Renford, and Lanny. And um, other than the, you know, their, their, their being the featured artists, you would also have persons like Alison Doe, Arthur Turn, she is the daughter of Alistair. Um, we'll have Tamara Morton, and um, I think one or two other persons would appear on the program. From Hanley's Road. For all from Hanley's Road. We would hope to have um, lots of people turn out and enjoy our program for the day. The Community Centre Open Days are in keeping with the theme of our Community Development Month, our community, our commitment, our concern. The Soka Monarch Contest for Culturama 41 is well on its way. This is according to Executive Director of the Nevis Culturama Secretariat, Antonio Abenati Liburd. Liburd is inviting all interested persons to a meeting which will be held on Saturday, May 9th. We want to meet with all of the potential artists, persons who are interested in entering the either the power category or the groovy category, we want to meet with all of you on Saturday of this week. That is Saturday, May the 9th, 1 p.m. in the afternoon, and that meeting will be held in the conference room of the Navy's Island Administration Building, downtown Charleston. At that meeting, um, we are expecting that all persons who have a desired interest in entering the competition this year would be at that meeting so that we can discuss and probably finalize plans for the staging of the Culture Armor 41 Soka Monarch competition. 
Persons who are interested in entering the Culturama 41 Ahsoka Monarch competition are asked to visit the Culturama Secretariat in the Cotton Jewelry Mall to fill out a registration form or visit the website at www.culturamanevis.com where the form is available for download. Meanwhile, Lybird says Calypsonians who are interested in participating in the Senior Calypso competition for Culturama 41 will be eligible for a $500 stipend if their song is released on or before May 31st, 2015. The registration for the Miss Culture, Senior Calypso and the Miss Swimwear and Mr. Cool contests remain open. Meantime, as stated by Liebert, the Junior Parade would see 10 schools participating. He also outlined the theme chosen. We already are meeting with the schools um, to get in the contestants for the Mr. and Miss Talented Hood pageant on, on, on stream. We have also met the schools in terms of the junior parade. And what I can say, what I can report now is that the theme for the junior culture street parade this year will be Nevis naturally. Um, there are some 10 schools that are on board, um, including our two high schools that are on board with us this year. And so we are, we are, we are looking to have a, a grand parade. Again this year we are going to have Bankers Mass Camp of Simkits on board with us in terms of, of designing and, and making the costumes for the, for the Junior Culture Street Parade. According to Liebert, Bacchanal Corner plays an important part in marketing Culturama and on Friday, May 29th, the first Bacchanal Corner for Culturama 41 will be held in Charlestown from 3 p.m. Entertainment will be provided by DJ Woodis. The slogan for this year's festival is Culture, Fet and Fun, Culturama 41. Coming up after the break, Liat adds new Caribbean routes for summer. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Regional air carrier Liat has added a series of new routes for the summer season, the company announced this week. The new routes include non-stop flights between Barbados and St. Kitts every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, Barbados to St. Martin and back every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday and Sunday, among others. From Antigua, customers will now be able to connect with a new daily service from Tortola to Sangwang each evening, says Liat. At CEO David Evans. This is in addition to the existing morning service from Antigua to San Juan via Dominica, which operates daily. There will also be new flights between Barbados and Trinidad on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. The latter flights will operate from Barbados to Trinidad via Guyana in the morning, and in the evening, the flights will operate non stop from Barbados to Trinidad and on to Guyana before returning to Barbados. The company also announced that it had taken delivery of its ninth ATR aircraft. The introduction of more non-stop services means quicker flight times to some of the key markets, Evans says. The new services and non-stop routes will be launched on July 15th and 16th, although they are already on sale. Author Deborah Lelouch has dedicated a copy of her new book to the past and present students and teachers of the Cicely Brown Integrated School, saying they share fond memories and hopes for the future. The book, Mathilda of Mount Travers, was illustrated by past student of the then Special Education Unit, Leon Silcott, who together with Lelouch presented the copy to the school's supervisor on April 29th, the first anniversary since the renaming of the institution. Leon and I go back a long way, uh, probably to about 1998. Um, I began working with Special Olympics because of my love of horses and, and horseback riding and so forth. And we had a program out at the stables and Leon was one of our first Olympic athletes. And he went to North Carolina in 1999 uh, along with Keyshawn Williams, who's 
not here today, but um, they, they won a lot of prizes and uh, they went on to Ireland in 2003. And all this time I was getting to know Leon and as, as someone before me said, he's never without his sketchbook. Matilda of Mount Travers is based on the life of a girl who grew up on Mount Travers plantation during the slavery period. Lelouch says she knew the book had to be amply illustrated in order for everyone to enjoy it. And so she challenged the Silcott to bring the scenes to life. The way we did it was I would read him the story and then he would illustrate it. But I have to tell you, the first time he drew Matilda on the cover, she was wearing Nike tennis shoes. <laughs> you know, Leon's big, big into the latest gear and all that, so he thought, Matilda deserves the best I'm going to get. So we had, to, we had to talk a little bit about that. A biography of Silcott, which may be found in the book, describes him as an accomplished artist. Leon, who works in design and woodworking at the Nevis Craft House, can rarely be found without his giant sketchbook close by. Now 28 years old, maybe 29, Leon? Okay. <laughs> we would. Um, he, he never stops refining his technique and moving into new subject areas. He began drawing as a small boy inspired by a cousin in Cox Village where he lives. While attending the special education unit, he was also enrolled in the technical drafting course at Charlestown Secondary School and graduated first in the class. <laughs> Leon's talent is God-given underpinned by a keen sense of observation and, and detail, and enhanced by his vivid imagination and grasp of human emotions. Expect great things of him, and we do. Leon Silcott also designed the 30 cent Hawksbill stamp, which was launched by the Philatelic Bureau. That's it for tonight's edition of the Nebus Newscast. Thank you for viewing. Good night.